quick recap so we know where we are because we've been in this chapter for a little while now. <laughs> Can't get through it. I think we're going to get through with this chapter today. I think. I think. Unless Sorry, God, yeah, medicine, unless God stops me somewhere. Okay. Uh, the Israelites went and fought the Midianites. Okay. Uh, and I, I'm going to remind you this because this is going to come back to play in just a minute. They picked 1,000 soldiers from every tribe. There are 12 tribes, so there's 12,000 soldiers of Israel went and fought against Midian. Okay, 12,000. That's an important number. They went and fought, killed the Midianites, killed the men, brought back the women and children. Moses said, bad idea. Uh, get rid of the women. Get rid of the boys. You can keep the girls. And we, we went into the reason for that. And I don't have time to go back into all that, but there was a reason. It was a good reason, okay? Uh, so they did that. They killed all the captives except for the girls. And then last week we talked about how they had to go cleanse themselves because they had all been in an enemy camp and they had bloodshed, you know. So they had to abide outside the camp for seven days and they had to purify themselves in the fire and in the water and all the stuff that they brought back with them had to go through the fire and the fire if it could withstand it, the water if it could. <coughs> and that was, we talked about last week about being tried by fire, which you got to really be careful when you teach or preach or write something because the very thing that you talk about that is what you're going to be tested on the next week, <laughs> over the next several days. It's like, really? <laughs> it's like, do you mean what you say or not? Are you going to practice what you preach? So, yeah, there was some fire this week, but God got us through. God got us through. So we're good. But this is picking up right after that, okay? Right after the men were outside the camp and they cleansed themselves and whatever, and they can come back in, okay? Okay, all that. Numbers 31, 20, verse 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eliezer the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation. Divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle, and between all the congregation. Okay, so all the prisoners and all the livestock that you, that you brought back, okay, because of course you bring that back, you, that's useful. All of it, you divide it into two parts. A part for the warriors, the 12,000 who went and fought the battle, and a part for the rest of the congregation. Now remember, we're talking about probably two, 2 million people here. Wow. So 12,000 get half, and the other 1 million plus <laughs> get. <laughs> but that's fair. You think about it, the warriors are the ones who risk their lives, mm -hmm. while everybody else sat back in camp and just... Nice, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I don't know if the warriors volunteered or if they got picked, or, but they risked their lives. So it's only fair that they get a better share. Okay, so that's the first part, divided into two parts. This is the warrior's share, this is the congregation's share. Okay? And levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle. Okay? Where's God's part? God demands a tithe, a part, a portion of everything we have, whether that be money or talents or whatever. Okay, so he says, levy out a tribute for those that went out to battle, one soul of, a, of 500, both of the persons and of the beeves, which is cows, bovine, and the asses, which is donkeys, and of sheep. Take it of their half and give it unto Eliezer the priest for a heave offering of the Lord. Okay, so here's the soldier's half. Take one out of every 500. So there's 500 sheep, take one. Out of every 500 cows, take one. Out of every 500 people, take one. Okay, one out of every 500 and put it separate to go to Eliezer the priest for the Lord for an offering. That's, that's only right, okay? I'm gonna, I have a picture to help you with this because this, you go through all this and it's like, okay, my head hurts. <laughs> I have pictures. And of the children of Israel's half, this half, the congregation has, thou shalt take one portion of 50. So one out of every 500, hmm. one out of every 50. So they're giving, giving more, even though they got less, they're giving more of what they have. Uh, of the persons, of the beeves, of the asses, and the flocks. What's of the per sorry, sorry, what's of the persons, what is that? The people, the girls, the slaves, 
the girl slaves that, yeah. Oh, hello. Of, yeah, of the young girls, slaves, wives, whatever they were going to do with them, of them, they would basically, of the, the ones that would go to the temple, they would work in the temple then. I was like... Yeah, no, the, no, 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 not, not, not for sacrifice, but for to work, you know, somebody has to clean all the, the, you know, the, 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 the basically the dishes, you know, right. the candlesticks, you, you keep it clean, it's the temple, it's sacred, oh, you know, okay. the tabernacle, it's the tabernacle, not the temple, but, you know, you got to, so they had that, you know, they had people that cleaned and, and worked, they had people that helped the priests with different errands and whatever, okay. so, they're basically slaves to the priests, but not sacrifices. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that, but yeah, it's like of all the all the people and all the livestock, everything that's living, they divide it up. Okay. Good question. Uh, and of all manner of beasts, and give unto them, give them unto the Levites, which keep charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. So you got the priest, he's doing like the sacrifice and whatever, and then you've got the Levites who are in charge of the tabernacle. So, like I said, taking care of the. Whatever he need, whatever they needed done. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. Obviously, okay. So here's, I got, I got some picture for you, and I use this word, and I got to realize, and once I put it on here, I was like, I might should have used a different word, but this is the word that it uses in the Bible. It talks about the booty. Okay, that's what it's called. I mean, you know, it, it's. That's the spoil. That's what they took, okay? So here we go. Here's, hey, I gotta make All it. Right. I like pictures. <laughs> so here's the total booty, okay? Total booty. Total booty, okay? Sorry, I'm still Once proud. they took, okay, once they took all the stuff, okay, this is what they brought back, total before they split it up and whatever. This is the grand total of what they brought with them, okay? There were 675,000 sheep, okay? 72,000 cows, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 girls, just girls, because that's not counting, and the Bible makes it clear that's only those who had not known a man. Okay, so, so the ones thank that you, ladies. Get slaughtered or the ones that, yeah, that's the ones that were left. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's so. There's thirty-two thousand girls, not counting the boys, not counting the women. As many okay. people as they had on that one side, you know, the half that didn't go fight. That's probably enough, enough for just the, you know, I mean, like you think about it. Mm -hmm. Sixty-one thousand donkeys, but you have two million people. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. So it sounds like a lot, but and it is a lot. I mean, because this is in addition to what they already had. Oh, that's true. Because they took what the that's Egyptians true. gave them. Plus, they've already had some other battles, so who knows what they got from that. So this is what they took, and then they split it in half. Okay, remember? Half for the warriors, half for the congregation. So when they split it in half, the warriors ended up with 337,500 sheep. Okay, that's a lot. 36,000 cows. 30,500 donkeys and 16,000 of the girls. That's a lot of girls. That's a lot of girls. <laughs> and I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that about the girls, okay? The fact that there were 32,000 total. That's going to be important in a minute, okay? That's their half. Obviously, the congregation has the same number because they split it in half. They have 337,500 sheep. 36,000 cows, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 girls. So it was dead half. You get half, you get half. Okay? But then, remember, they had to take out the Lord's portion. And of the warriors, it was one out of every 500. But here it was one out of every 50. So, now they're so it's 10 times sure. more here that they had to give away to the Lord than over here on hmm. the warriors. So, of the Lord's portion, okay, each group had 337,500 sheep. The warriors gave 675 of those sheep to the Lord, to Eliezer the priest, to use as the offering. The congregation gave 6,750 of their sheep to the Lord, to the Levites for the tabernacle. Okay? Did they sacrifice 
I'm not sure what they did with the con. They say the, you know, the warrior's portion was for a heave offering. So an offering is a sacrifice. Exactly. But it doesn't say. Yeah. So, yeah. Plus 600, yeah. it would be both of them. And it would be the both of them. I'm wondering if the congregation's portion that went to the Levites for the tabernacle maybe was maybe they stored them up for offerings throughout the year. You know, they didn't do it all at one time. You know, I think that was kind of more, let's pin them, and when we need an offering, we'll, we'll pull from here instead of pulling people's personal sheep. You know, we'll pull that. That that would be my guess, but it doesn't say specifically what it just says for the use of the tabernacle. So I'm not exactly sure what the congregation's portion that the Lord got, what he did with that. That would be my guess, would be just kind of storing them up for future sacrifices. Okay. Um, and again, the girls is not part of the sacrifice. That That's just for working in the ta temple with the sacrifices. They, they didn't kill the girls. Okay, of the 36,000 cows that each group got, 72 of the warriors went to the Lord, and 720 cows that belonged to the congregation went to the Lord. So you see how the congregation's getting, their share is a lot bigger as far as what they're giving away. But again, they didn't go fight. This the crowd did. gave to the Lord by fighting, too. They gave, yeah, they, they gave the ultimate sacrifice. They, they put their lives on the line, okay? The other people did. The 30,500 donkeys that each group had, the warriors gave 61 to the Lord, and the congregation gave 610. And then of the 16,000 girls, the warriors gave 32 to the Lord, and the congregation gave 320. I still think that's a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you do with the? I mean, I don't how know how much. How much help do you need? I mean, yeah, you that's what I'm help, wondering. But, I don't know, you know how much help, but. I, you know they already have people working there already. Mm -hmm. I'm get, I get, Especially if they were smaller girls. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And it could be even that they were raising them up in the tabernacle, teaching them God's work, teaching them the law. They could they basically be now, in school. They yeah. had to now be they, like the yeah, Israelites. They right? were now Israelites, whether they grew up in Midian or not. Now they belonged to Israel. So it could be that they were in the tabernacle being taught you know, almost like a school. They were being taught God's ways, God's laws, you know, Israel's history, you know. That would make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So it's that, still a lot of girls. But it's still a lot yeah. of girls. Yeah, it's still a lot of girls. So that's the, the, the verses 32 through 46 goes through and does all that. But it, it, it goes through and it spells them out in the Old English kind of. The, and there was 30 plus the 7,000 plus the 3,000 plus, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Wait, 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 so I already did math for you. There, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. There's math. So that's what they had, okay? They took a lot of stuff away. Took a lot of stuff away. All right, now, I want to get to this part because this is where I really want to hang out today. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one portion of 50, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Levites, which kept the charge of the tabernacles of the Lord, as the Lord commanded. So that's, okay, what we were just talking about. They, one out of 500, one out of 50. Okay, here's where it gets cool. I love this. And the officers, which were over thousands of hosts, the captains of thousands, the captains of hundreds, all the people in charge, okay, came near unto Moses. And they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war which are under our charge, and there lacketh not one man of us. In other words, all the captains and whatever were in charge and they were responsible for their own men, their own soldiers, right? So now they're after the war, they're counting up, okay, how many men did we lose? Oh, wow. You gotta see who, 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 who we lost. So they're counting, I have all 50. I have all 100. One. Counted it up, not one was missing. Wow. Not one man was killed. Is that amazing or what? For a battle, yeah. Now, for any battle, that's just amazing, okay? For any battle, that's just amazing and overwhelming. But, Catch this, and that's why I wanted you to. <laughs> Look 
get everybody, get everybody settled. <laughs> Play musical chairs. All right, here's what I want you to keep in mind, though, that makes this even more grand than it already is, okay? How many soldiers did Israel have fighting the battle? 12,000. 12,000, okay? The Bible doesn't tell us how many soldiers Midian had, but it does tell us that after all the men were killed, after all the women were killed, after all the boys were killed, there were still 32,000 girls left. Wow, yeah, wow. So how many people do you think actually fought Israel? A lot more than 12,000. A lot more than 12,000. A lot more than 12,000. If there were 32,000, just the girls left. Young girls. Young girls. You know all the older boys fought, all the men fought, and maybe even some of the women fought. <laughs> so their 12,000 went up against who knows how many. We know later in the book of Judges, Gideon, he goes up against the Midianites, and the Midianites have an army of 135,000. And Gideon starts out, and he's, he ends up with like 10,000 or something, and God keeps dwindling it down to where there's 300. Midian's army, still 135,000. The odds are 1 to 450, which means every soldier is responsible to kill 450 men. Good grief. Yeah, I like them odds. <laughs> no, but they did it. They did it. In fact, most of them died before Israel even raised their sword because God was on their side. So here, I have no idea how many Midianites they were fighting, but if there were 32,000 girls left, that tells me there was a whole lot more than 12,000 men and boys fighting them. And yet, not only did they win, but they got back, they counted up, and nobody was missing. Not one of their soldiers was killed. That is unheard of. That is unheard of. I've never heard of a battle outside of the Bible where at least one casualty didn't occur. You know? That's just, that's the way of war. I mean, casualties are part somebody's of war. Somebody's going to shoot you before you shoot them. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> going to get caught in a crossfire. Somebody's going to step on a landmine. Somebody's going to get, you know, somebody's sneaking up behind them. Somebody's going to get hurt. But they said, we've counted, we've, we've taken account. We've taken the sum. And nobody's missing. Now look what they did. I'm going to show you how much Israel has changed, how they are finally growing up. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord. What every man hath gotten of jewels, of gold, chains, and bracelets, rings, earrings, tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. Wow. You know, you split up the cows and the sheep and, you know, the donkeys and the people and, you know, we... We, we already gave that to the Lord, gladly. But once we saw that nobody was missing, we just don't think that's enough. We want to give him more. So all the gold we took, all the chains, all the jewelry, all the, all the stuff that was worth a lot of money, we, we, we want God to have that too. Uh, wow. What point, what purpose does God have for rings and earrings and jewelry? And That's not the point. It was, that's not the point. The point was they said, we think God is worth more than what we've already given, and we want to give more. We think he deserves more, and we, we, just, we don't feel right keeping this. We just want to give it to him. And they didn't just give the leftovers. Mm -mm. <clears throat> they didn't just give the leftovers. Yeah. They said what every man has gotten. We all want to pitch in and just we want to give what we got. Now, you know when those men were taking that stuff in Midian, they weren't picking it up going, oh, I that would be nice for the Lord. And, oh, mm -hmm. let's give that to the Lord. And You know that was not their motive when they got it. <laughs> they were going, oh, pretty. Oh, shiny. My wife will like that. You know, that's what they were thinking. That's worth a pretty penny. You know, that's what they were thinking. You know it was. But when they got back, they had a change of mind and a change of heart because they saw what God had done. And they, they knew what we, what we say now, that's not possible. It's not possible for everybody to be safe. It's not. And God says, 
yeah, with me anything's possible. So they're like, let's just, let's give it. Let's, we, we just, I wanted to see Moses' face at this point. You know what, Mo, we, we've been talking for Finally. months. Yeah, we've been talking for months about what Moses has had to put up with. And I, I can't imagine how many times Moses has rolled his eyes or clenched his jaws or just, you know. And now they come up and they say, we want to give the Lord something. I'm thinking, I was like. And he didn't tell them. <laughs> and he didn't tell them. He didn't tell them. He didn't urge them. He didn't. They came to him and said, we want to give this. Growing up, growing up, finally. And Moses and Eliezer, the priest, took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels. They were so proud, I can imagine. They were so proud of them, just like you are, child. Yay, you're finally learning. And all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord of the captains of thousands, of the captains of hundreds, was 16,750 shekels. And I meant to look up and see how much a shekel was, and I forgot. But 16,750, that's a lot. I can tell you that's a lot. <laughs> for the men of war had taken spoil every man for himself. So there you see why they took it. Not every man took spoil for the Lord so they could give something to God. So every man took for himself. Me, me, me. I want this for me. It's all about me. But when they got back and saw what God had done, they said, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Moses and Eliezer the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it to the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. I think that's cool. Because I said, what purpose did the Lord have of, you know, rings and earrings? And I don't think he wears those, you know. <laughs> Here's a good purpose. We're going to keep this, and we're going to set it up for a memorial. What for? Well, let's see. Every time you see it, what will you remember? You'll remember God's goodness, God's provision, God's protection, you know? And you'll remember your attitude towards God. You gave this willingly. You gave this out of a willing heart when you could have kept it for yourself because nobody was making you give it away. And I can imagine if there was a time where, you know, somebody was feeling a little bit selfish, they'd walk by and they'd see that gold and they'd go, oh, yeah, it's not, I shouldn't be selfish, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you see something sometimes and it reminds you. It's like, oh, I shouldn't act that way. You hear a song or something, and it's like, oh, yeah. You know, you see a Bible, see a Bible verse, and you're like, ouch. <laughs> it was a memorial. God, Moses said, let's set this up, and let's set it here so we always remember what God did for us and what we did for God in return. Now, obviously, giving a, what, anything we have to give pales in comparison to what God gives us. I mean, we've, we've got nothing to give that could even come close to being worth what he gives us. But do we try? Or do we just say, well, I can't really give anything that's worth enough, so I'm just not even going to give anything. That's not a good attitude. We need, and this is kind of my challenge for this week, we need to remember every single day what God has done for us. We need to look around like these men, they counted their men to see who was missing. We need to go every day, we need to count our blessings. And when we do, and we see how good God has been to us, that will make us want to give back to him. It will make us want to give him our attention, our time, our talent, our money. You know, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money either. But I'll give him what I have. I'll give him what he's due and above and beyond that when I can. But even more than that, I'll give him my heart. I'll give him my time. I'll give him my attention. I wonder how many times throughout the day he's going, excuse me, Dana, excuse me. Hello, you know, and I'm just busy doing my thing, you know, <laughs> sometimes serving the Lord, but I don't have a minute to stop and talk to him. 
kind of like Martha, you know, we're cumbered about with much serving. We do that. We get so busy serving God, we don't spend time with God. And God says, could you just be still for just a minute and please talk to me? Because we don't like to talk to somebody when they're, mm -hmm. don't we feel like they're ignoring us? They're not paying attention. You can't be paying attention to me when you're looking at that or you're reading that or you're doing 15 other things. You're not paying attention to me. I want you to pay attention to me. But don't you know God feels that way when we say, well, I'm listening, Lord, I'm listening. I'm, I'm going to do this while, while I'm listening. You know, we're not listening. We're not listening like we could or should. God says, am I not worth your time? Am I not worth your talent? Am I not? And the thing is, like the... God didn't tell them, you have to give me all your, your gold that you got. You know, he didn't tell them that. He didn't make them feel guilty. He didn't tell Moses to make them feel guilty. You know, so you're going to keep all that gold, are you? Not going to give any of it to the Lord. Mm. You know, they didn't do that. God said, I want them to do it because they want to, not because they have to. That's why God gives us choice. Because he wants us to love him and to spend time with him and to worship him because we want to, not because we have to. It's not... Is that mean thing when you're forced to? Yeah, it, that's, that's what I'm saying. Love isn't love when you're made to, you know? Like they have the love potions, you know? That's not love, you know? If the person didn't have a choice, it's not love. God knows that. He says, I, don't want, I could force them. I could make them. But I want them to do it because they want to. I want them to do it because they love me that much. I want them to do it because they are so overwhelmed with gratitude for what I've done for them that they just, they can't even contain it. And they just have to give back. When was the last time we did that? When was the last time we did that? I have a feeling, and this may not be true, but it seems, maybe because I hang out in Christian circles, Sometimes we Christians are the stingiest people when it comes to money or time or whatever. You know, it's like, well, I, I'm busy. I can't help you. You know, I'm busy with my own stuff. And, and I'm, I know we get busy sometimes and we have our own obligations. But when we're always too busy to help somebody else, that, we're too busy. You know, when we never have time for the Lord, we're too busy. You know, as far as money, no. That's a hard one because it's like, how do I give money when I don't have money? And we've done it. We've done it where we give money and say, you know, well, the Lord will bless it because, you know, we don't really have it to give. We'll give it. And, and then our bank account will withdraw and we get a fee and a fine. And it's like, really, Lord? You know, <laughs> but you know what? Later on, God will bless us by somebody giving to us. And it's like, it all evens out. At the time, it's almost like Satan's kind of got that little slap in your face going, look, see, you think doing for others is so good and that, you know, God will bless it, but he didn't bless you. He, he, he gave you a punishment, you know, and it cost you more money to be good, to be nice. Sometimes I just want to just die shut up because <laughs> he gets in your head and you're looking at it and you're going, yeah, you're right, that happened. Mm -mm. It may have happened, but we don't see the whole big picture. And you know what? Even if it did cost me more money, so what? I still needed to do it. I felt like God was telling me to do it, so I did it. And if it cost me more money, it cost me more money. Big deal. You know? I'm, I'm still fed. I'm not going hungry, I promise. <laughs> I am not going hungry. I have clothes. I have a roof, you know. I have air conditioner in this heat. Hallelujah. I'm not doing without. God's taking care of me. And then that, isn't that what he promised? It's what he promised. So ladies, my challenge to you this week is just count your blessings. It can be, we talked about the last week, the fire, being tried by fire. It's so much easier to focus on everything that's going wrong in our lives instead of everything that's going right. When actually the things that are going right outnumber the things that are going wrong. Just those things that are going wrong seem to almost have neon signs, hello, hello, look at me, look at me, you know. But let's take our focus off of that. Okay, we were talking about the worry. How do we not worry? That's one, that's one way. We say, I'm not going to look at that because that makes me worry. 
So instead of looking at that, I'm going to look at what God has done already. I don't know how he's going to fix this problem. I don't know when he's going to fix this problem. I don't know anything about this problem except that it makes me worry. So what I can do is I can go over here and I can look at my blessings and say, God fixed that problem, and God fixed that problem, and God did that, and God did this, and God did that. And you know what? Pretty soon we're not, we're not looking at that. We're going, yeah, if God, I mean, that was a big problem, and God already fixed that. So if God can do that, that's nothing. It kind of puts things in perspective. But we have to make that shift in our focus, and we have to make that point of saying, I'm not going to look at this. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to count my blessings, and I'm going to do it every day, and I'm going to do it several times a day if I have to, to the point where I can feel like God wants me to do more, or I feel like I want to do more for God. You know, till that love and that gratitude swells up so much in me that I'm like, okay, God, what can I do for you now? I just, or maybe I just want to sit in your presence and just, just be so thankful, you know? When was the last time we did that? I just want to sit here and just say thank you and thank you and thank you. I don't want to ask for anything. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll start. Thank you, Lord, for this. Oh, and by the way, could you help me with... And then I go on for 15 minutes about, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you help me with this? Can you fix that? And, and I had that one little, thank you for this. It's not very balanced, is it? <laughs> let's keep our focus on our blessings. And let's do like these men. We, we know these men. They're not, they have, up to this point, they have not been really good people. But they were so overwhelmed by what God did. We need to live our lives overwhelmed by what God's done for us. And the only way we're going to do that is if we focus on what he's done for us. We look at it every single day and say, if I have to, I'll sit there and write them down. And I'm going to be very specific, you know, because if we just say, thank you for my family, thank you for the world, you know, that that doesn't take very long. (laughs) Well, even then it actually does. But, But get specific. I mean, you know. And thank him for things he's already done as far as situations he's already worked out because that helps us remember what he can do, what he's already done, how he's proven himself. And it'll make us want to just say, here, God, take it all. You can have all of me and everything I have, just take it all. Because that's what he wants. But he's not going to take it. He wants us to give it. And that's the challenge for you this week. And we finished the chapter. Yay. (laughs) Finally. It is 54 verses. I mean, that's a lot of verses. (laughs) But we did finish. Okay. Anything? Anybody? Yes. Uh, Real quick. um, Well, speaking of blessings. Praise the Lord. We had a tree get struck by lightning. And it fell on our house. But uh, praise the Lord for that. Thankfully. (laughs) Thankfully. It didn't. It doesn't look like it caused any damage. We haven't figured out a way to pay for it to get chopped down and moved yet. But. The Lord will provide, but it um, doesn't, you know, the windows that where it was. And thankfully, first of all, it fell in our bedroom, not the girls. Mm-hmm. You know, if something were to happen, it's better to be yeah. on top of us instead of on top of them. But um, it doesn't look like there was a bunch of damage or anything. You know, once we take it off the roof, we'll know more. But right. um, no windows, especially were broken and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's a miracle right there, yes. that, you know. <laughs> Because we, we were like, the first thing we heard was like, really? Like Five hundred something dollars for the AC. We had this go wrong. Why do we buy this house? And then you had this lesson. <laughs> what, what, what did you tell me last week about <laughs> that you've not been tried by the fire? I just don't know I was going to say. Because <laughs> I had, well, And also praise the Lord that I, after talking to you, you know, it's easy to get, I get busy and I just don't. But the Lord has, I've been praying for him to keep it in my mind, and I have actually, which is a major accomplishment for me because I'm not a great Christian by any means. I have read the Bible every day since Sunday. Good for you. So, that's praise wonderful. the Lord that the, he's kept it, you know, in my mind, mm-hmm. um, which has helped. And helped you make time for it. Because yeah. we do. I mean, if it's fine time, we won't. We have to make time. Yeah. Good. So. I'm glad to hear Yes, God that, is, that is. And that is um, absolutely. Um, I really-
really, that's very true. Um, this morning I get up and I sit and read my Bible. Mm -hmm. And I, that's the reason I was late. Because I sat in bed and read and read and, and I said, oh, that was me to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. When we spend the time, we feel like our life is more smooth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, you feel like Puts you're equipped. More yeah, yeah, you're yeah. more in perspective and you're more equipped. And if you're going to be late for church, that's the that's best the reason. Best reason. Yeah, that is reason. the best excuse for being late for church home. ever. Yeah, yeah, if you're late because you're reading your Bible, nobody's going to yeah. complain. I've been I finished all the Ecclesiastic. I love the Ecclesiastic book. I finished all that. I'm very interested. I just keep reading on that. I don't. I have a trouble with Ecclesiastes. I'm like, okay, I don't get this book. It's like he's just whining. It's all vain. It's nothing's worth it. And I'm like, he sounds like me. I'm just like, it's so bad, Ted. You know? But you gotta, again, you have to read it in the perspective, and you gotta look at it, and it's like, okay, okay, I'm getting this, you know. But so yeah, you can get. There's interesting things in there. It's too much like us today. Yeah, it's too. It sounds too much like me. I think I get convicted. That's what it is. It's like wine, wine, wine. <laughs> Yeah, he does a good job of pointing out, you know, it's like you're spending time here, but is that really worth it? You know, like what, what we were talking about, being balanced, you know, so yes. All right, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Oh, it's three minutes. We got to hurry. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this message this morning, Lord, this um, reminder to be grateful, Lord, to focus on our blessings, count our blessings, Lord, and to always be willing to see how you are worthy, Lord, of so much more than what we can give, but, Lord, that we should give you everything we have, not because we have to, but because we want to, Lord. And I pray that you would help us to keep these things in mind, and thank you for these blessings that we heard this morning, Lord, these praises, and just pray, Lord, that you would be with the needs on our hearts, and that you would be with our services, and I pray, Lord, that we would just keep you in our focus, Lord, throughout the week, and that we will remember to honor and praise you in everything that we say and do, because you are worthy. In Jesus' name.